Greetings once again, Taekwondo family. Welcome to Miami Minutes, the show that invites you to, to skip class and give us a listen. Go on. You won't get in trouble. Do it. Do it, do it for me. Do it for Johnny. Come on. I, I am one of your hosts, John Parker, or Johnny, as I have now dubbed myself. I think that was very taken aback there. I think that's the, the first and only time <laughs> I've ever re- re- I've heard anybody refer to you as Johnny. <laughs> it's rare. It does happen, but it's very rare. I don't use it that much. No. Hmm. Uh, it's, like it's, a, it's a nuclear option for when, <laughs> I don't know, when you're like, I need to make this conversation extra playful. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, it went with the sentence. That's the main mm. thing. I have one. I've been called Jay a few times. Well, just Jay, like people come up and go, hey, Jay, like that. Yeah, but I think they mean it like J-A-Y, like Homer J. Yeah. Simpson. <laughs> I don't like it we have a friend, Jimmy, and certain people call him Jay. But then there's also a guy that he he hangs around with called Jay. It's like, yeah. why are you people making this complicated? <laughs> it's like, too confusing. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, but uh, but I am here with my face spasming in a apparently comical fashion. <laughs> Uh, it's me, Niall McGann. I mean, that's you every day, right? Yeah. Every yeah, minute of every uh, day. You can't stop it. Mm. <laughs> I, look at this, uh, I look at this minute and I feel seen. <laughs> I do, because uh, we're back in Nerd City here at minute 14. The minute starts with the clanking of keys, and it ends Ooh. with the defence of the indefensible jerk. <laughs> that's like taken as a, a, a minute by itself. Uh, you'll be like, oh, this guy, this guy, John, like the guy from Dragon Town, what an asshole. <laughs> and her brother, Jeff, seems great. <laughs> like everything about him. Seems like, he seems like what a lovely guy that he must be. Uh, uh, you know, we will get, delve into that as we go through. But I will say, you know, I genuinely think that's good writing uh, to make mm. the one of the villains very multifaceted. Yeah. Because yeah. these kind of movies don't usually do that, do they? They're just, <laughs> he's evil, he's a dick. Whereas this is like, he's a dick for a reason. Yeah, this is kind of more like I'm on the... You'd think they would be like, oh, I'm on the run from my brother or mm. something. He's always trying to you know track me down to control my life. But uh, but no, no. They actually have a, a sympathetic Jeff. Yeah. Um, it's as if the, the actor probably... Maybe he didn't get the note. <laughs> I don't know, because he plays him very, in a very distinct direction. He's got a lot but, going on, Niall. Cut him some slack. You know, yeah, the, yeah. the business deal, uh, and then he's... he's Found out she's hooking up with some nerd. <laughs> There's a lot yeah, happening. Like, not, not just any. It's just, the guy hauls her out of class. <laughs> but, oh, oh, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Oh, yeah. We're, as I say, we um, are back in Nerd City. And just look at all these poindexters. I know I said the uh, I liked the, the clattering sound last week. But it's, it is it is it's so loud, so constant. I'm surprised it's not like... Like it would, you know, if you were there all day, every day, you'd get like a complex about it or something. <laughs> like you'd be had to go with like the headphones on or, or something just to kind of drown out that repetitive. I don't know. I, as a as a techie person, I, you kind of like it. It's sort of hypnotic. It reminded me of like of the. Um, I remember the first time I saw Whiplash, mm. and you know, at the end of that, it's like there's like about the last fifteen minutes of that are just Miles Teller jazz drumming like crazy oh yeah like it goes on so long you know it's great sequence but it's just like oh my god so much drumming i remember like taking a shower after i watched it and in my head still hearing the you love it and there's nothing like miles tell i don't know if he can even look at a drum now because i think he did he did all the training he went 100 into into that movie Paid off very well. But afterwards, you're like, oh, no, I never want to even <laughs> hear music now. I've had enough I for this. one lifetime. <laughs> All I do is listen to ambient synth where I know there's no percussion. <laughs> like, <laughs> That's how you scare him. You put him one drum beat. <laughs> Boom. It's in the middle. Just... <laughs> 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 um, but, uh, <laughs> but we find out here, though, that uh, the guy last week... Uh, was his name John Leeson? Uh, apparently, he's actually playing a character in this. Uh, he is, in fact, Doctor Smith. <laughs> what an original um, name! Yeah, I don't know if this is some sort of prequel to Lost in Space. <laughs> uh, and this is where his character comes from. But uh, he's either going to be. I can never remember. I'm, I'm sure in America, Lost in Space was a much bigger deal. Yeah. I don't know. I just know that Gary Oldman 
movie. Like, you know, it wasn't even the Gary Oldman was just Dr. Smith in it, where he turned into a big spider at the end Wait, or something. Do you mean the Matt LeBlanc movie? Yeah, yeah. Why didn't you call it that? He's the star. <laughs> well, even is he? Because I thought the, the, the star would be more like, well, it's William Hurt really is the star. Well, yeah, I suppose. And then I... Matt LeBlanc's like the, he's like the cool Han Solo type yeah. on the side. But, I'm thinking, uh, I suppose, of the marketing at the time centered on him because of Friends, didn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Plus, again, the fact that he was like the sexy, cool mm. Han Solo type. Um, he's, he's a man who's aged well. He suits the, uh, the gray hair. Yeah, although, you know, <laughs> we know, of course, it led to, uh, he does look very much like a, a Northern Irish dad um, <laughs> from the, the the endless memes that were going around. And I say endless memes in the best possible sense because yes. every single one of them was welcome. I don't think there was me. a single bad one. Yep, it's every one of them is like, perfect. Absolutely perfect. <laughs> um, but yeah, but like that movie, because I had like baby Lacey Chabert is in there too and stuff. And Jared Harris is knocking about in it, but... Uh, but now I just always remember, like, oh, yeah, Gary Oldman, because that, that was in the middle of his whole just playing a villain and everything. Yeah. I think it, was like, it might even be, like, the same year as The Fifth Element or something. Uh, and, then, and then there was the, the other TV show that was out recently, and I watched, like, two or three episodes. And I know Parker Posey played Dr. Smith, in it, mm. and I love Parker Posey, but she wasn't enough to get me to stick with oh, it. Oh, really? <laughs> like, See, I, I heard was... good things about that show, but I never got around to seeing any of it. I thought it was very. I know. I know some people who really, really loved it, and I was like, it just didn't really strike me as all that. Like it had Parker Posey in it, but she wasn't. She was like, it was all been played quite straight, and like she's good at being comedy. Yeah. You know, you know but uh, you, you know what doesn't uh, have Parker Posey in it? This scene. And, no, uh, tragically, not, unless she's in there in the background well, somewhere. We just haven't spotted her yet. But the the professor there that you you, you brought up, he singles out in this class, Jane. And mm. goes over to her, and I'm just sat here thinking, you perv. <laughs> he, doesn't he seem creepy with her? He's, I think he's got a thing for her. Well, I mean, we haven't seen the, the circle that she's made. John. It's a good <laughs> like, circle. He points out that it's a good circle. Um, I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Is she sitting on, like, Microsoft Paint or something? Like, a good circle. Well, just, I, I suppose, though, if you think about it, back then, like programming a circle probably was quite tough, right? Mm. I guess actually, yeah, it was supposed to be because no, you had to literally have no angles on it and stuff. And I say, I've, I genuinely really, really want to know what they are programming here. Like, Yeah, what circle's got to do with whatever is happening? Yeah. Unless it's like, you know, in Halloween 3, where they had like the, it was all like drew, like the, the, the plot at the end was that, there was chips from Stonehenge. Oh yeah, I forgot about those. the Stonehenge thing. <laughs> yeah, the guy, the main villain was like an old, like a druid, <laughs> and <laughs> he had put like bits of Stonehenge in all the masks, and then but the, everything in the mask was going to be set off by the the image of like a an, an electronic pumpkin mm-hmm. that would flash on the screen. So unless this is that. Like oh yeah, we're all everyone has to get this, the program a circle so then you can compress it into a pumpkin, and then we're like it's all part of Colonel oh. Cochran's scheme from Halloween three. And everybody to, turns uh, into motorcycle ninjas. Yeah, yeah. Either your head turns into a bunch of bugs and snakes, or you turn into <laughs> motorcycle ninjas. Maybe that was like the, the that, that that was the the botched version. I'm like, no, we're not supposed to turn them into ninjas. <laughs> we're supposed to turn them into bugs. <laughs> oh. No. oh. It it uh, is remarkable though. Good circle. Good. Cir- what what <laughs> writing? It's it's Shakespearean. But then you look look around everyone else's circles. It's like what the hell? It's like a wavy line. <laughs> What's like this piece of crap? It's like oh my god. That's a, I mean that would be good if I was looking for a rhombus. What the <laughs> hell is this? <laughs> and uh, the professor though, I think he looks he looks a bit lost, doesn't he? After he speaks to uh, to Jane, because everybody's getting on with their work while he kind of just casually mills around hoping that people have questions for him it's mm. going to be a long afternoon man I know, I've, I've seen i remember that been a thing in in my own computer class back in school where they're like well right, get all your work and then and unfortunately i have seen uh teachers uh approaching young women in the class Ew. and sort of being a very there's one i remember yeah, like that. i remember being at um we did a production of greece you know, I said in a very like I was talking like grease, like the substance there, <laughs> but 
but yeah, and I remember there was a cast party afterwards, and the music teacher, uh, one of the girls who was just in the chorus, you know, she's about 16, 17, she came in like a backless dress. And I remember noticing him going over and like touching her back. Oh, oh no, 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 no. Yeah. And I remember th- at the time, even then, been like, what the hell? <laughs> like, And the thing was, the school was rocked by scandal because the, one of the drama teachers uh, ended up getting fired because she was having uh, an affair with the kid who played Danny Zuko oh, <laughs> in my. that very production. So a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes, a lot of action happening by the scenes of Greece. And none of it was with me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> You're really upset. You're like, I wanted Danny Zuko. <laughs> he was a good-looking kid, that guy. <laughs> that guy who played Danny Zuko. And what is it with uh, with men uh, liking to touch people? I don't mean it's sexual. Well, it kind of is sexual, but I don't mean I mean, that that's... Way. That's, well, I, I, that, that, that's a teacher uh, hitting 50. <sighs> Married man with, with kids who were in the production, who were there that night. Uh, and yeah, going over and like touching a teenage girl on her on her bare back no. it seemed like, and she gave him a look too of like, what the hell are you doing? Like, and it stayed with me. It stayed with me all these years. I've been like, I don't, I don't, I, I'm sure she didn't do anything. I'm sure she was just like, you just have to roll with it. Like that's just the thing that's going to happen. But you, it shouldn't. You, you should have known better. An- annoyingly, like at the pub, you know, yeah, when yeah. when men need to squeeze past a woman. But they don't really need to squeeze past that. You'll see, they'll put their hand and be like, oh, can I just get past there, love? You know, and put their hand mm. on the back. It's like, you wouldn't do that to a man. Mm. <laughs> so what's the difference here? Why are you doing that? <laughs> What's that? There's that moment in uh, in Fight Club as well when um, Ed Norton and Brad Pitt are on the plane mm. and then Brad Pitt gets up to go to the toilet and he's like, well, now's the moment of the truth. Will I go with the ass or the crotch? And he has to squeeze past the stewardess and he kind of like he has his crotch into her ass Jeez. and stuff it's kind of like it's like a little like little sleaze bag moment from him but uh, of course Brad Pitt got a lot more controversy <laughs> these days oh but, uh, lately yeah holy crap that's uh, yeah. I, I mean we don't want to say too much because we don't know where that's going but apparently abusive yes yes yeah hopefully not but uh, it's not looking good <laughs> no <laughs> um, but yeah yeah so Tragically, we don't get to see the circle. That's uh, <laughs> that's my favorite detail. This great circle. Don't see it. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> they were like, YK Kim's like, well, can we get a shot of the circle? It's like, oh, no, we haven't got it. None of these. Like, they only came third in the programming. Or fourth <laughs> in the programming. Like, none of these people can do a circle. Like, you, you nuts. <laughs> YK Kim should make a special edition after all these years. Like, you know, this movie is just missing one thing. <laughs> we need to see the he circle. Just, he just he just draws a circle on a piece of paper and sticks it on <laughs> the screen. Like, we perfect, live right? inside a circle. Yeah, well, that's what the band, a perfect circle, were uh, in, in tribute <laughs> to the scene. <laughs> yeah, in interviews, they often you know are asked, "Where does your name come from?" And they say, "Oh, well, uh, Miami connection, actually." Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but then um, we then cut to the corridor uh, where we see. A cool kid strutting this stuff. Oh, yeah. It's Johnny Boy. Uh, yeah. Um, well, actually, Johnny Boy I, almost getting knocked the fuck out by an idiot not watching where they're going. <laughs> I kind of thought that was the, the guy probably did know that he was there, and he's just like, nope, <laughs> screw this guy. I'm walking on that. <laughs> no, see, I don't know. When when it's a corridor and people are going two directions, right? Come on. When, when that happens, you go single file for a sec. That's the cultural mm. rule. Just go behind the person you're with to, to, yeah, to, yeah. for space, you know. But at the same well, time, John looks remarkably unfazed by this. He doesn't care. He's like, whatever. Yeah, yeah, it's a good team. That's what he, he kind of, you know, he, his hands are lethal weapons. You know? oh, he knows yeah. Taekwondo. So. But that was a bit weird for, like, this is being a take in a movie that the guy won't even move out of his <laughs> yeah, way. Yeah. <laughs> like, is it supposed to maybe... Is it supposed to maybe sort of juxtapose his his talent in martial arts? Like, oh, in school, he's a bit of a dork and a dweeb and nobody sort of takes him seriously. <laughs> but he's actually, like, a badass. Well, Because I, 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 his attire here um, said a lot to me. Because he's got this, you know, cool, long black coat. Yeah, I really like the coat. Yeah, it's like the the duster and it's always sunny or something. It's like it's he's kind of going for like a... Um, like a Christian Slater and Heather's kind of vibe yeah. here. Like, it's like what I always aspired to when I was a teenager. I used to have a long black coat. Um, although mine had lapels on the shoulder because I was obsessed with lapels oh, on the shoulder. Oh, yeah, back I'm a fan of those, yeah. Uh, and so I was like, you know, we got, I, I was, you know, I think back then I was probably thinking, I, I bet I'm exuding like Christian Slater and Heather's vibes. 
And it was probably more this guy <laughs> that I was given. Because he, he, he's got the cool guy coat on, but then he's got like the dorkiest, like the most cliched nerd outfit on underneath with the, <laughs> well, you you say know, the blue that, polo but... shirt tucked in the jeans. Yeah, but it's stuff. a French tuck, which is all the rage. <laughs> so well was it in 87 though maybe in 87 it was bang out of fashion they had to wait for it to be revived that's years true later. that's true to be fair i don't recall it coming back into fashion until tan france from queer eye made it cool <laughs> you've been waiting since 1987 for <laughs> you used to uh french tuck your your nappies uh, <laughs> and then you were told no 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 <laughs> yeah I've you've just been waiting for it see i've tried the french tuck ever since like because Tan in that show is like, no, oh, you've got a French tuck. It's the only one that looks good. So I try it and I'm like, but when I do it, it looks fucking shit. <laughs> <laughs> there are just things, there's just certain things that, you know, mere mortals can't pull off that mm. people on TV can. Um, this guy can't pull off any of it. <laughs> <laughs> he does have that classic blue jeans, brown belt combo that my dad would wear. Yeah, yeah. He's got a real Tim the Toolman Taylor vibe <laughs> going on here. Um, and yeah, but I just really think like, is, is the coach supposed to denote him being like, oh yeah, it's a cool coat. Like he's supposed, he's the, he's the guitar player from Dragon Sound. Of course he's cool. Yeah, but they're like a wholesome rock band, aren't they? You know, I don't think the, I don't feel like the, the badasses like them. Because mm. mm. they're secret badasses. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but then he approaches uh, the computer class. Uh, and then, like, I have a feeling this was like, given bare basic bones in the script yeah of like any like comically gestures for her to get out not realizing that this guy doesn't have it <laughs> like, <laughs> it reminded me a bit of um samurai cop when they just tell uh is it mark frazier just just do some faces <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> and the thing is that, to be fair it's both of them like jane i guess is trying her best but like everything about this is like it's so, like, I think they're really wanting you to believe this is, like, charming and comical. And that, oh, he's such a lovable goofball. And it's just like, what is this? <laughs> this is like, why would she be enamored with him? <laughs> he's like, I, he just, he just, no, no. I'm torn. I'm torn. Right? I, I, I agree with you. But at the same time, I kind of like it, right? Because, how do I even word it? Because... The fact he's willing to look like that says a lot about their relationship. It says a lot about the characters. It shows how much he likes her, how close they are as friends as well as lovers. You only do dorky shit like this, weird face, you know, to somebody you love. You don't do that to someone you're wooing. Mm. <laughs> I know, I, I kind of got the vibe that they're still in, well, we get from later on, um, that they're still in the early stages of the yeah, relationship. Yeah, yeah, but I think it's very... You know, I think it's very, um, I don't want to say intense, that sounds like passionate sex, but it's very, uh, they've bonded quickly. Mm. You know, they, they're quite, they're in each, each other's worlds instantly. She's in the band now. He's come into class to break her out like it's high school, which is weird, <laughs> right? It's, it, it's a busy class, man. Fuck off. Don't do this. Don't wander yeah. in and interrupt. And also, this is university. It's not like mm. being a cheeky bastard in school and sneaking off. Like I'm sure the professor yeah. goes, oh, no, well, okay, can... leave. <laughs> yeah, you, can, you don't even have to say anything. You can just get up and walk out. <laughs> like, that's, just, that's, like, that's, that's your, you're paying for it. It's your privilege to do whatever you want yeah, with the time. If you want to fuck up, that's your problem. <laughs> yeah, but it's just, yeah, I thought he was coming in. He's probably distracting a whole bunch of other people. And I know I, I did it because we know we, we've just heard how well Jane is getting on with the circles. Mm -hmm. And now this guy comes in, he's going to throw off her whole game. Like, she's in the groove now, man. She could be, like, leading them to victory next yeah. year at the International Coding Festival. And the reason they never, ever came first when you went through all of that is because of this moment when he breaks her out of class. Yeah, they she came done it. She came in the next day. That circle was a trapezoid. Mm -hmm. And, like, the, the Dr. Green was just like, Jane, I just, you know, I'm not angry. I'm just disappointed. <laughs> But the thing is, Doctor Green or Doctor Smith, he's there as well. So he knows he's going like, "Hey, you, what, what are you doing? <laughs> like, yeah, well, get the hell out!" And if, and if you know, if you want to come in class, come in and sit down. Don't distract everybody. You think that you think John is actually in this class, and he's like, he's been skyping. The whole <laughs> he's time. meant to be there the whole fucking time. And they're all because he is a, a, a sea of nerds here. <laughs> 
him with that cool coat. And the fact that he's in Dragon Son, they're like, "Oh no, no, no! We, you know, he's he's the bad boy of the class." I think that was that was my vibe. It's like I, I, the nerds all thought, "Like, oh, I'm like a cool, I was like a goth and then a punk, yeah." But really, I'm just I'm this guy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was king of the nerds, I suppose. Um, but yeah, so it comes in. It's just, it's it's because it, well, it comes in initially. Does a kind of a loud hi. But, and then just <laughs> flat out just says Jane. Yeah. And then just proceeds to do like he does like, an eyebrow wiggle. <laughs> then he does this thing, which I don't understand at all, but apparently it's hilarious, where he puts like his thumb and then to his um uh, to his temple and then starts wiggling his fingers. Oh like, yeah, I thought that has to be like a reference to something, right? Could be like it's like an old like a three stooges thing or something. That's or... what I'm thinking. Something like that. It's got vibes like that where it was probably hilarious in like nineteen thirty two. Yeah. <laughs> oh, according to Jane, hilarious right now. <laughs> in nineteen eighty seven. And the but the, something I don't think the the way they f- probably filmed this as well. Like that's probably she they did reaction shots from her at a completely different time. So it's just a bit weird. Like he comes in with this sort of manic energy, and then she, her looking up is very slow, <laughs> and then she kind of reacts in a bit way. It doesn't seem like it's happening in the same room at the same time. Yeah, There's a yeah. sort of slight disparity, but I, them. probably why I got the samurai cop vibes. Yeah, <laughs> but he's going hard with his eyebrow game. Apparently, this is like the, and he just keeps jabbing his thumb and doing like a weird thing with his neck, which makes him look like he's about forty-five years old. <laughs> And, uh, and he does that sign that you never see anymore, the OK. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> which I think it comes, does it come from diving? I think it comes from diving because it's a sign underwater, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Um, and when I was a kid, maybe the same uh, for you as well, but every fucker did that all the time. It was like a cool thing to do. Mm. It must have been stemming still. It must have been from this movie. <laughs> <laughs> I do have it uh, frozen on him at 35 seconds doing it. It's, it's a great screenshot, to be fair. <laughs> like, Are you suggesting that yeah. should be the episode, John? <laughs> I, I, think, I think it should be, John. I think it's, look, it's absolutely perfect. <laughs> well, I have to say, though, I still do the, that okay thing all the time. But I'm a, Oh, my God, this guy is me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not knocking that symbol. Like, I think it's very <laughs> useful, you know, especially as somebody who, at work, I don't want to speak to anyone. If I can communicate mm. to them without speaking, I will. But you just don't see it much, you know? Well, that's weird, though, because I always interpreted it's supposed to be like, it's like you're making the sign of OK. Yeah. Because the O is in your finger and thumb, and then the rest of it's the K. But then, for the way, the angle, you're showing it to people, it's like, that's a KO. So, <laughs> oh, yeah, I've never thought about saying that. saying it's, it's a knockout. <laughs> it's literally the opposite of being OK, being KO'd. <laughs> um, but the, the, I would appreciate it, like, if he was doing... If they were going somewhere to do something fun, if this cut to them like going out to like the beach day that happens later, mm. I would get like the it just, it just feels like he's impulsively gone. I'm gonna go get her out of class, and then I've got no real plans. Because I'm bored. For what <laughs> yeah, yeah, and maybe he's like 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 pinning down the rage within from that guy nearly bumping into him in the corridor. <laughs> oh well, you know what? That's something I didn't even bring up, right? It might just be me. If something like that happens to me, my whole day is is gone. Right? Yeah. I, yeah. I, for the whole day, I'm just seething. <laughs> like, mm. at the moment, there's a bunch of people who seem to come to the bus stop uh, when I'm getting on the bus in the morning at the last second and try and get on before me when I've been waiting 10 minutes. I'm like, no, no, it's a queue. Fuck off. I, I've had to physically elbow someone out of the way. <laughs> I'm like, no, you fucking wait. <laughs> no. Yeah, the ones I remember from years later, where um, where one time this guy nearly bumped into me in the street because he was peddling his bike down the middle of the pavement, Ugh. and it nearly crashed into me, and I was just like, you mother, like I was really ready to erupt. And the, the thing was, you're not supposed to have your bike in the pavement. No. It's, it's it's illegal. It's, like it's a proper, and it, they they're all over the place. Are you look in Liverpool city center, John. Uh-huh. They're everywhere. People riding bikes and pavements. <laughs> Oh, my goddamn time. And it's illegal. They're the I'm bane of my me. fucking life. And I support riding bikes because, you know, I'm quite anti-car. I like the fitness. I like the environmental aspect. Just ride mm. it in the right place. Oh, yeah. I would 100% support, you know, people riding bicycles, just not on the pavement. Because there's a reason you're not supposed to do it on the pavement. Because you'll run into people. 
And it's just, you can't just, just get out of the way to make bike lanes for you, for Christ's sake. Yeah. Just stick to them. <sighs> but uh, but now, like, because Liverpool also now has the uh, electronic scooters. Oh, they're well, the biggest bait. They've been trying out. Yeah, but the people have done, those are clearly, well, that's a motorized vehicle. Clearly, that's, you're supposed to drive that on the road. Yeah. But no, people have chosen, like, no, it's zoomed down, pavements on it. It's like, get on the goddamn road with the bicycles, with the cars. Mm-hmm. We, the pedestrians, are on the pavement. And then nothing can crash into us unexpectedly, exactly. okay? Unless it's another person with legs. Ugh. People. Yeah. I hate people. I'm, uh, th- John doesn't seem to care. I think he should be angry. John, yeah. you should. You, you, well, but you again, know, you might he's... be right. He wants to vent. You mean they're like he just needs a distraction? So like I'm gonna go out with my I'm gonna go out with my girlfriend and I'll cheer me up. Or I could, I'm you know more likely that uh, Mark has taught them some sort of taekwondo, you know, chi oh. kind of Zen state of mind. Yeah, perhaps. like uh, don't dwell on the present. Yeah, he's probably done a full on Mr. Miyagi with the whole. It could be like a slight cult vibe to the whole <laughs> house, really. But it could be like they were all sent there. Like these are all angry young men. Like these are guys who just really lost their way. Oh, and that's stuff. the prequel right there. How <laughs> how they all sort of fucked up their lives as teenagers, and this is them fixing yeah. it. John perpetually was was cutting class and taking other people, distracting people with his goofy faces <laughs> in the corner. And then uh, <laughs> I would love though they had like the person next to Jane was also watching them and was like properly like erupting with laughter and like banging the table and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, then they're probably all sent to like no, you know, Mark's been there a long time. Like, and it's like you send to him, he'll, he'll calm them down. He'll show them the true path to take. Oh, I stuff. love it. Yes. Uh, well, well, speaking of the path, though, because uh, it does cut to them walking a path. Yeah. Uh, out there, I think that was my kind of dis- disappointment again, because it's like the kind of thing that he did. You'd see this again, like in a couple of years' time. In uh, Dazed and Confused, mm. the Richard Linklater movie, where uh, the character played by Sasha Jensen, he does thing, he goes you know it's the last day of school and he goes over to like a classroom, and he starts like trying to get one of the girls to come out and he's all like hey, and he's kind of and he's like to be fair to him he's a much more professional actor yeah <laughs> and he was probably improv and some stuff and like what he's doing is like it's not funny but it's kind of like I can imagine someone being charmed by it and stuff. Uh, and then the teacher does come over and is like, what the hell do you think you're doing? Get out of here and stuff. And the best moment in the whole movie where he's like, he tries to come on to the teacher because it's the last day of school. And she just like <laughs> pats him on the head like a dog yeah! and walks away. <laughs> oh, fail. No, uh, but um, unless that was a cut scene from this, I don't think Dr. Smith did that to John here. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But the thing is, like, that, that, that scene is like, that's this thing he's doing working. But also he's trying to get her to go out because they're all going for a big party at the la- on the last day of school. Uh, this is like, he got her to cut class, get her away from her important work with the circles <laughs> to come out and just hang out in the, it's just, it's clearly just stopped raining like two seconds ago <laughs> and like, just kind of walk around doing nothing, which is like, I guess it's also like a Richard, Link- Richard Linklater move and like the before sunrise kind of way. Yeah, like, yeah. I just want to wander aimlessly. <laughs> but, well, here's a question because of the transition from the last scene to this one. Do you think she actually did leave early? I know, like, cause she was shaking, she was nodding her head, like, oh, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah I'll go. She I'll might go. just be humoring him because you could interpret it as like her being, yeah, I'll, I'll see you later. You know, she's a smart <laughs> girl. I think maybe, like, again, no offense to the woman playing Jane or just anyone in this movie, but I think, like, a more accomplished version of the scene. Would be the guy doing something that's actually funny and pulling like actual good faces and stuff, and it would be would be a bit of her going get out of here, get out of here, like trying not like trying to be serious, and then his charm winning him over, and then her kind of sniggering, and then been like, oh okay, okay, <laughs> like you know. But they just played up. He shows up, this dorky looking, <laughs> not particularly good looking guy. Hey, what are you saying about my John? Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, he's. He's doing well with Jane. Jane's very cute. He's not so much. <laughs> I'd say he's on the lower rung of dra- of all of Dragon Sound. But I think he's probably like. Terrible. I think he might be the worst looking one of the bunch. To be honest with you, that's <laughs> disgraceful. Now, uh, I think you know, but the, you, you so, uh, 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 now I uh, maybe I have to look inward to myself. If he were a more attractive man, would I would this bother me so much? 
that's what it is. You're just being um, like very cruel to somebody you don't think is attractive. Mm, yeah, maybe maybe I need to go. Maybe I need to go to the the YK Kim Mark uh, dorm room yep. and have a, a look inside myself. You need to go for <laughs> some uh, nice meditation in a teepee. Mm, yeah. Was it the saying she she Hulk? I'm hurting for a yurtin. I yeah. couldn't remember the phrase. I wanted to say it. I couldn't think of it. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, but no, no I, I do think that she because again, like, I guess maybe she's like, well, I've already perfected the circle. Why would I need to? <laughs> to hang you can't around, improve so. on perfection. Yeah, I mean, Doctor Doctor Smith's just like, you know what? I think we're gonna win next year just because that circle. So you go, you get out of here, <laughs> you crazy kids, go live your lives. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, so we cut then to uh, them walking by the bike rack, um, and then I just was. Remember last week we talked about like an old random man who was just walking around the campus by himself. Yes, I don't think he's in the background of this as well. <laughs> like he's just, he's just kind of like you know, strutting. He's like, I guess he had a long free period, this guy, whether he be professor. He's got nothing going on. Yeah. I mean, why not? He could be a professor. I think we said that last time. He could be, but I like to think he's just some weird old student. <laughs> this is like elderly Michael Myers stalking people. Oh, God. Yeah, the it turns into a horror movie. He's still just there or in um, It Follows. <laughs> like it turns out, yeah, oh, he's, he's the thing. He's following them. <laughs> That's the big twist. He's actually in charge of the villainous ninja gang. And that's he's, mm. he's following them to get info, uh, and because uh, they won't suspect it. Ah. that would be good. Actually, they had like if you look in the background, you can see like ninjas in the trees or something. <laughs> <laughs> but they're always the, it'll be like House on Haunted Hill, where you find out like oh there were ghosts in the background of all the scenes if you looked and oh, stuff. Oh, I would love that. Uh, YK Kim, please go and uh, digitally insert those in your special edition. Yep, yeah, they've got the circle, and now random ninjas in the trees. <laughs> Now, um, have you noticed as well, there's this guy, I, I fucking love this, and it's the stupidest thing to laugh at. He comes into the shot um, sort of right at the beginning uh, of this bit where he's got like a, a dark jacket and some beige pants on. Mm. And he, he just casually walks, casually walks along the path until you get to around second 51. And then he just mm. suddenly breaks into a run. Watch. No. Uh... Let's see. Oh, he's, he's still really strutting there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it just legs it. <laughs> <laughs> and he look. He looks like he's being followed. He's looking around all of a sudden. Like, oh, it reminds me Wait. of that uh, that uh, video of that, that person who died in the hotel. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Alyssa Lamb. That's it. And you, like, you see her looking around. It made me think of that. <laughs> Maybe he's, he spotted the old man. He's like, oh, my God, it's him. <laughs> yeah, he knows. He knows. <laughs> It's like it turns out that like um, I think the the, the the legend always goes that uh, like Annie Hall was originally like a much bigger, longer movie called mm. like Anhedonia or something, which apparently is like a condition where you can't experience joy, uh, which is a very Woody Allen title. I was gonna say that that tracks so far, yeah. Yeah, and apparently it was supposed to be like it was it was it wasn't about the central couple. It was it was a whole bunch of other plot lines going on, and then. At one point, Woody Allen was like, "No, the, uh, the actual the, the only thing that's really working for me is the love story between these two people." So I reworked the script, mm. and now it's just Annie Hall. Um, but you know, I, I don't know if that's true because that feels like, particularly back in the seventies, they'll be like, "Well, what are we doing with all the rest of that footage we shot, Woody? Like, you can't just cut the can't cut like an hour of stuff." Oh, what they actually shot? Okay, I was going to say that sounds perfectly believable if it was like at the scripting stage. No, I, I believe they, they 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 said that they had shot a lot of it as well, but um. You think nowadays people would be like, "What? Where's the where's the footage now for a special?" Well, I could, no, they wouldn't do it nowadays because uh, of course, yeah. <laughs> nobody nobody wants to freaking dodge somebody off with a freaking goddamn barge pole. But um, it could be though. Miami Connections, like, oh yeah, there's multiple. There's a plot line about a, a old man stalker chasing <laughs> this guy around the place. There's like a, all the Doctor Green uh, or the Doctor Smith um, sexual harassment <laughs> stuff. That's it was gonna, all like, set up the line. Dragon Sound cinematic universe. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, so I didn't notice that guy. Oh, that is, that is intriguing, though. Unless he saw uh, Jane, and he's like, "She's a she's in my computer class." She's oh my god, the class! <laughs> I'm <laughs> late. <laughs> Doctor Smith is gonna kill me. Or he's friends with Jeff, and he's he's mm. running to go and tell Jeff now. Now that he's out of sight of the two of them, he's like, "I've got to go tell him." 
Look, I mean, taking this this minute into account, what we find out about Jeff is that he's he's the one foot in the bill for um, Jane's education. Yeah. And it is a bit like, so this guy comes along and he takes you out of class when you're doing so well. It's like I can under I can almost begin to understand where Jeff's coming from. It's like, I mean, the Doctor Doctor Smith called me. He said your circle was perfect today. I mean, why why would you want to mess with perfection? I get that. I do. Yeah. Um, that's that's why we're we're about to hit that bit in a second. Actually, Jeff is an interesting character. But to get to that bit, we get one of my favorite things in the whole movie, and I don't know why. It's because I'm stupid. But John says, Jane, I've been wondering about your family. Do you have any family or anything? <laughs> I haven't met anybody yet. And I just love that dialogue. And I thought, you know, that kind of does make us think how long have they been going out? Mm. And also, you've got to consider, you know, this is university. Is she from the area? Because here, mm. I would say, it's not, it's not too common to stay in your village, town or city. No, a lot no, no. of people go elsewhere, but I'm not sure about America because I mean, it's so. Not big. A lot of people are going to the University of Central Florida, which came fourth in the 1987 oh, yeah. coding competition. But she <laughs> might not be from there. Maybe Jeff mm. has moved here to help support her education. Yeah, yeah. Maybe he's heard that he heard he's heard the coke deals are great down there. <laughs> so like, you've got to go there. I can <laughs> pay for your education well, through all the coke deals. Well, that's that's essentially what he's doing, right? Because she says, you know, oh, I've got a brother. And uh, he's paying for her education. So it made me think, if he's in the drug business for that purpose, for the money to send her to school, then there's still good in him. Yeah. Obviously, he's (laughs) ultimately... You can feel it, John. I can feel it. I can feel it. So obviously, he's ultimately (laughs) harming people, you know, in ways with the drugs. But at least he's not doing it for personal gain. I'm sorry, I just got distracted thinking of someone saying that to Jeff. Like, I can feel the good in you, the <laughs> conflict. And Jeff's been like, conflict! <laughs> oh, that would be so good. I, I need. Is he still around? We need to contact this guy and get him to do that scene for us. <laughs> and send it in like a, as a Patreon special. <laughs> it's like, if you will not fight, then you will meet your destiny. He just rips off the earring and throws it at them. <laughs> yeah, that could have been the climactic fight with, uh, with Mark. Hmm. Although if the climactic fight, I can't, I can't remember who it is who deals the the finishing blow to Jeff. Is it John? Wait and it, see. It should it should be because there's the one getting set up for the conflict. Because it's like, well, it's, it's but it's there's beef between them. It would be weird if Mark was the one coming in to take care of that. But um, although it does happen sometimes, where you just get like, I think a lot of times, you know, as much as I love Cobra Kai, you're always very much like. Well, this person has to fight that person because if someone else does it, then it doesn't really. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. You know, that that that's who they have conflict with, which is why I'm so happy at the end of season five where they actually got the people. Okay, so they should be fighting this person. And blah, blah, blah. Like when it got down to like it's Danny versus Terry Silver, it was yeah. like thank God this is what I want to see. But I was worried then it was just going to be chosen. It's like oh, I love that fight, but that's not like. Danny versus Terry Silver has been coming since 1988 or whatever. I agree, so. but the Chosen fight was one of the best fucking things ever. Oh, it was great. Yeah. The whole that whole episode was great. That was like literally a, like a televisual masterpiece. Yeah, <laughs> just it was made for nothing. <laughs> it was it was based entirely on a very very bad Karate Kid sequel, and it was just amazing. It was it's an absolute miracle that that show is, and that's the end of the fifth season. It's like uh-huh. how are they doing this? I can't I can't believe it. I can't believe it. But yeah, I, I, I will agree though that because that, it seems like as if you know he's brought around with his his, his gawkish Jim Carrey face pulling <laughs> charm, and then they do were just walking around in silence, potentially potentially the worst thing. To be fair, Awkward actually, silence. now that you bring that up, I used to do that when I was at college, which isn't the same as university here, Americans. Um, I basically would skip college. To just go hang out with my girlfriend and just like sit in the park and drink cider. Mm. <laughs> and did you show up at her door and start pulling like the OK sign and the? Uh... I can't uh, say I didn't. I mean, mm. maybe. <laughs> I said you truly you were the John. Of, uh... John was the John. <laughs> Johnny was the John. <laughs> Johnny was the Johnny. Um, but yes, it is a very awkward like. 
it's again not a professional actor trying to sound like avuncular and stuff like hey uh, you know what, what about your family <laughs> very, he's, yeah. yeah he's going for kind of like a um, Sylvester Stallone thing there They're just Gabin you know actually I would say actually in many many ways this is a very rocky Adrian relationship yeah. because she's very quiet and very shy as was Adrian like chronically so mm. and Rocky was like I recently rewatched Rocky too. And I was kind of like, I love, I love this character, but Jesus Christ, does he ever <laughs> shut up? Like he's it, he's constantly chatting around her. He's never he never stays quiet. It is like a machine gun, isn't it? Mm. And you kind of get the vibe. It's like, oh, Stallone just making up a lot of this too. <laughs> oh, totally. But, I I get the. He's not playing a character. It's just like Stallone, just just chat shit. <laughs> yeah, but of course, you know, in Rocky lore, Paulie was the abusive brother. Yeah. Who, you know, he did say he gave up everything to look after Adrian and just, you know, he's looking after his sister, too. But he's a bad guy. <laughs> and I think mean, people always forget, too, that, that, particularly that first Rocky movie. Paulie is horrible. Like, oh, he's irredeemable. I don't know how they managed to make you forget that. I think they just sort of just like, let's just not, just not make him abusive for a while. <laughs> And then when he gets like a you know a pet robot, everyone will be charmed by it. <laughs> I think you should have at least had not in the second one. I think you should have drawn it out. But by three or four, there should have been a scene where he he basically apologizes, mm. and he's like, "I'm really sorry. I was trying my best. You know, yeah. things were tough." Yeah. It's like so the thing in that first movie. He's he does have a big thing of like, "I've given up everything. Like I could be off doing this and that, but I have to." Because she. Can't get, she won't get married and all this other like stuff. Like Jeff so, with her. Yeah, yeah. But then at the same time, it's just like, well, the reason she can't get married, Polly, or she won't get married, is because you're there all the time telling her that she's ugly and grinding her down. Yeah. And she's a freaking shy wreck because of you, asshole. But, uh, and uh, then he's, yeah, he's, he, he's an alcoholic, isn't he? And mm. it's like, well, that's, uh, that's not helping matters. It's making you more abusive. And but why mm. is he an alcoholic? Is it, is it the stresses of raising her? Oh, Jesus. Yeah, he's like, it's just, yeah. And he's just like, well, but a, but a miserable situation. My only outlet is getting drunk. And then that just makes him worse to his family. And yeah, yeah. And then Rocky's just in the middle, just like, hey, what's going on over here? <laughs> Trying to be goofy, you know. But this would have been the height, of the, I said the height of Rocky. It probably would have been around the time Rocky Four came out, or, or God, God forbid, even Rocky Five. Oh. So yeah. it could be like they were going for a Rocky vibe with this uh, this relationship. But the thing is, Sylvester Stallone got where he is because he's Sylvester Stallone. And the reason you ain't seen John from Miami Connection in other things is because he's no Sylvester yeah. Stallone, baby. And in fact, speaking of both acting and dialogue, this is my favorite dialogue in the scene. I know I love the other one, but this, 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 oh, fucking Christ, this is golden. This is golden. She says, if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have been going to this nice school or staying in this nice dorm I'm staying in. And then John says, <laughs> that's really nice of him. They say nice three times in as many seconds. Well, he's a nice guy. He's a nice guy. <laughs> he Fucking hell, three nices. Did nobody read the script and go, hey, we should we should change one of those? Mm, this would be like a, what was my, my day job as a proofreader. The amount of times I would be like, no, no, no. <laughs> it's like repetition. No, no, you can't, you can't be doing that. There's such but a thing then. as a thesaurus. <laughs> um, although I did... Uh, <laughs> I like the idea, though, that like... Yeah, do we do have to wonder how long have they been together? Because you can find out, like, this is, like, their fifth year anniversary or something. <laughs> it's like, oh, you know what? I've never asked about your family. I and can... then she's ready with the information right there. It's like, oh, it's not as if, again, another script might have been, like, also tell me about your family. And she'd be like, mm, you know, I don't really want to. And then you'd find out, they're like, well, Jeff, yeah, he's provided for me. And he's, you know, he's making sure I'm, I'm getting an education. But he's, you know, he's, you know, he's a bit. He's a bit much and stuff. Mm. And then you would kind of get a bit more of a tease of to the trouble in paradise instead of the way that she says it. It's just like, I'm ready with this information. Mm. I'm surprised you have not asked me about my family before, <laughs> quite She's frankly. She's furious about it secretly. <laughs> um, I mean, that's why they were walking in silence. She's just like, I ask, I'm, like, I'm not doing it this time. I ask him. I know everything <laughs> about this man. He never asks me about me. I'm going to wait and see if he does something. Um, I, is that a bad thing? or Because... I sometimes worry I'm this guy. Like, I don't often ask people questions, but it's usually because I'm anxious mm. and I don't want to mm. start a conversation. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If someone else starts it, that's fine. But I don't like being the instigator. And I know that can be frustrating for people, I'm sure. Mm. Um, so, yeah, sometimes you can be perceived as being 
kind of self-centered in some way. Yeah. You, but then you, because you're just not thinking about like, you know, because you're worried about coming off badly in another way. <laughs> so we end up, the conversation's not, you know, ah, you know what, it, 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 they're minefields, you know, relationships with people. Oh, but, Jesus, yeah. That's why I thought maybe, I, I, I'm going to estimate, I think they've been going about five months. Hmm. Five, five months that he's not asked about the family. Yeah, I think so. Because, Oof. I mean, they're, they're, they're supposed to be quite young. Um, and you, you know, they're, they're fun-loving. They're, they're in a band. They're, they're partying. They're having a cool time. They're night. Nice. He's got no need to ask about the family. Maybe maybe mm. she isn't from there, and that's why he doesn't ask. It's like, well, her family's back home somewhere, mm. in his mind. Here, 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 I'll posit this. I think they've known each other a couple of months, but I think she joined the band first. Ah. As they're like, you know, maybe Mark or whoever, whoever the visionary. Oh, I'm assuming Mark it's John. And then it was just like, we need like, um, you know, this song, I can imagine a female singer. So we need some. And then they did auditions and she's like, I've just moved to town or whatever. And they brought her in. And then for like a couple of months, it was just like, oh, yeah. And then, you know, they kind of got talking backstage one night and yes. stuff. And now they've been like together. As a couple, maybe three weeks or something. Oh, I like this. This is this is good. Yeah, I'm yeah, on board so, with it. So she's she's familiar with all the guys because they've been a band for a while. But like, it's only now that uh, they've kicked up into into high gear, mm. you know. But um, and that would that would explain how they're friend they're so close, like in friendly capacity. But he hasn't asked about the family. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Because he's just like, oh yeah, I think I've known you a long time, but I've never because it's always been like music based stuff we've been talking about. So I've never actually asked about you in your family life and stuff yeah. like that. So yeah, 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 I can see. I just I saw the uh, the headline the other week uh, where I was like, oh man, I don't know if this is gonna end up. Uh, th- this is gonna end well because um, I know now that uh, emo classic band Paramore are back with oh, a new single. Yeah, and I know that uh, Haley Williams she got divorced from like the guy from like Newfound Glory or something like that. Um, but I know that Paramore broke up for a while, and now they're back. They've just got back together. Uh, a new song, I actually think, is quite quite good because it's like a weird, like it's like a kind of really stoned, stoned hippie psychedelic rock thing. Oh, okay. And then the chorus kind of kicks into a very herky jerky, like early talking head song. I'm like, oh, this is this is weird. <laughs> like I, I like it. But they've been they've been getting the further they get away from emo. Ironically, that being what their like most defining thing is, the better the band seems to get. Although, but... is what you're gonna say about one of the emo songs? No, no, it's oh. not not that. It was uh, it's just they announced that the band has recently reformed. They got a new album coming out, and Haley Williams and the guitar player are dating. And it's like, oh, so this will be like the end of Paramore. Basically, like <laughs> that relationship will fall apart, and then you'll never get back together oh, again. Oh shit! Because yeah, that's tempting fate. That is. Oh, it's a real. I don't know if there's many bands who date within the band, and it doesn't end. You know, end in disaster. Uh, yeah, but. unless you're already a long established couple, I, I think that's asking for trouble. Yeah, if, if you're yeah. a couple and then you start a band and it, that, like okay. Uh, it just seems like, I, that, it, it's like I'm not. I'm not going to get up in your business. You, th- those, those Paramore kids are, are grown adults. Yeah. But I, as a very, very casual observer, was just like, that. That doesn't seem like a good idea. Yeah. We <laughs> like, wish you I, well. You fundamentally, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it's like you know, what like three, three constant people in that band, and like the other guy now is just that you know he's just there as well. It's a bit like. This is gonna end badly, you know. Oh. This is but he's probably feeling uh, a bit awkward in the corner. <laughs> just like yeah, yeah. But um, but anywho. <laughs> but I guess I do know there was also the other controversy they had about the well, the, their old songs I'm bringing and stuff it as well. back. But, yeah, I thought you were gonna mention something with that. <laughs> no, no. Um, but the, our business is not in misery in this in this oh. episode, <laughs> uh, unless it's Jeff's misery when he finds out that his goddamn sister <laughs> skipped class. No, my, my business takes turn into uh, some additional info I got from the commentary track. Oh, nice, nice. Because uh, when Kim's speaking, he says that Vincent Hirsch, you know, who plays drum, mm. is one of his finest students. And mm. these days he has his own schools. Oh, nice. Yeah, and he, he said back then he would help teach at, at Kim's schools as well. So even mm. here, like, he was already like one of his top sort of uh, instructors. And Kim calls him a great fighter. A great champion. Mm. And I was like, oh, that's that's the highest praise of all. Yeah, yeah. Although now knowing that he teaches a class, 
I kind of want to go to the door <laughs> while he's teaching and start gurning and freaking trying to get his distracted his students. What are you going to do about it? Hypocrite. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> then he gets my nose with his toes. Like, oh, God damn it. <laughs> well, I didn't realize great... Mark taught him that as well. If he's a great fighter, a great champion, he could probably break your nose with his toe. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. I thought he must be getting up there. I thought say that. Like, you know, freaking... Some of the, you see some of those guys from Cobra Kai. It's like they're like seventy and they're still in great shape. Yeah, they look so. amazing, don't they? And, you know, you see that quite a lot. But, you know, people are in a lot better shape these days in general. Like wrestlers can even be like sixty now and look good, mm, whereas the sixty-year-old mm. wrestlers in like nineteen ninety-two, it's like they look like they were on death's door. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's either they've been training in a horrific manner or they just haven't been training at all yeah because it was just it was just fun back then you just had to you could show up in any shape and you're a wrestler it was fine yeah yeah, yeah. And that was like, one of the things of um because the guy yeah again that guy playing terry silver is just like he's what like 60 odd or something now he looks great and he uses like a pan he was like oh yeah I, I, I was doing karate before i was in the movie like i was like and i, I still do it to this day so of course, I'm a great. Job. That makes sense to me because I always got the vibe from Karate Kid Three that he he seemed to know what he was doing. Yeah, like he yeah. held himself in a very different way. To no offense to him, but someone like like you know Ralph Macchio, mm. uh, you could tell he doesn't really know what he's doing. Yeah, yeah, he has his own distinct little hacha as well that he does. Yeah. which is more like no, that's my actual thing for my actual fighting <laughs> and stuff. But yeah, he had a real. I think he was like. I think he originally thought he was going to play um, Mike Barnes, like the bad boy karate Mike Ooh. Barnes. Because he was just like, well, I'm, I'm like the same age as Ralph Macchio. How could I play a Vietnam veteran? <laughs> he like does look years. a lot older than him. Yeah. And then they were like, no, you got to play Terry Silver. He's like, really? <laughs> and then it was like the best decision they ever made <laughs> because like, he's easily the best thing about that movie. One of the but... greatest fucking actors of our time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Came out of retirement for Cobra Kai. I was like, thank God. <laughs> like, uh, the only other note I have uh, for... Well, I have two notes, additional notes. Uh, mm-hmm. Is just I'm enjoying in the background there the uh, the white bread sandwich. What's going on? Because <laughs> it's like, this is the couple's walk, I guess. You know, So it's uh, John and Jane. And then this lady, she's got surrounded by two men, both in jeans, both in white t-shirts. Yeah. Um, I'd like to know what they're getting up to oh, <laughs> behind oh. the scenes. It's like, it's a white bread sandwich. Menage uh, to a... Like that one guy, he's... You know, only, she's only holding hands with one of them. The other guy has got an umbrella, though. So like, I don't know if he's like the cabana boy or something. <laughs> or it's, it's like, oh no, in case it rains, you, put, you hold the umbrella over both of us. Maybe they're a, an early sort of polycule. Could be, mm. could be. It's like it's an experimental university, you know? Yeah. And it's the perfect time when you're, when you're that age. And they've, they've uh, all got pan vibes, I think. Yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's just why the that's why Doctor Smith is just like, hey, anybody, <laughs> like anybody who comes in, maybe he's just like, eh, you know, things will work out between you and John. <laughs> Give up. him my number. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I don't even joke. Well, Jane, you can as well, but John specifically, make sure he <laughs> has my number. <laughs> I'll give it to you both, and then uh, yeah. you know, feel free to uh, to give me a call. Mm-hmm. But also, just note of that guy, uh, as you're saying, what the the blue jeans brown belt combo. He's got a brown belt on what appears to me to be uh, a pleated blue jeans with the cargo pockets. Yeah, which I- was which I think I think that was, I don't think that fashion trend survived 1987. Um, I genuinely want a pair though. You know, maybe cargo cargo jeans. It's not like it's like. I if it was a brief period where you had like leather t shirts and leather jumpers. Oh, and yeah. it was just like, nah. <laughs> it's a, it never even came back in any kind of retro way. It was just like, this was a bad idea. <laughs> I never went for the leather. I had PVC trousers. Mm. Uh, never leather. No, I'm not a big. I, I don't even like denim, quite frankly. Not mm. that I don't like the look of it. I don't like the feel. It's of the it. feel. The only denim I can sort of really get on board with. I mean, a jacket's fine because it's a jacket, okay. But for trousers, yeah. um, I don't mind ones like not skinny, right? But they they do have stretch material in them because mm-hmm. whatever that is, I don't know if it's like an elastic or whatever. It softens it, mm. and it means it's not as rigid. So you know, you bend over, it actually moves with your body. <laughs> yeah. 
I think I've, I just always, I just hate that. I hate that vibe of like, it's always cold mm. when you first put it on. Denim. Jeans to me. You like can't you tell if it's dry. Yeah. It always, every time I put them on, when I when I did wear them years ago, I put them on and always had this kind of like, when I was like, yeah. Like it was just always felt very unpleasant to put them on in the first place. So I'm just like, I don't, I don't like jeans. I just, I just sort of, uh, you know, eviscerated them from my wardrobe afterwards. <laughs> so that, yeah, that and like, yeah, leather is not really my, you know, I like it in other ways, <laughs> but uh, but not not as not as casual wear. Um, nah, I think but, uh, now I've got although, the double whammy of yeah, being a vegetarian, so I don't like it on that level as well. Yeah. Although maybe if someone brought to me a pleated cargo jean <laughs> I, I might get bored with it but, or pleated uh, cargo leather pants <laughs> maybe this would we should be this would be like the miami connection fashion line well that's not going to be the merch in our store <laughs> <laughs> but people are all expected to be like dragon town t-shirts <laughs> and it's just like no it's pleated jeans with cargo <laughs> pockets it's a high level fashion house <laughs> <laughs> leather cargo pants <laughs> like are they is that in is that in miami connection like, no it's not inspired by about? yeah <laughs> it's like one of those terrible soundtrack albums where like <laughs> songs inspired by miami connection <laughs> they always pissed me off it would be like songs from and inspired by the motion picture it's like what <laughs> <laughs> and then it'll be something like you know coolio <laughs> Singing about being in Miami or something. I was like, this is nothing to do with it. Although, also, R.I.P. R.I.P. Uh, big man. Yeah. We did. We talked about Coolio in depth in our other show, uh, Bat, Bat, Bat Minute. Because uh, he features, of course, in Bat Minute and Robin. So. He does. He does. So he, he insists he was meant to play the Scarecrow as well, which uh, mm-hmm. I think is bullshit, but I love it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think our theory at the time was Joel Schumacher might have told him that uh, to get him to be in this movie, but uh, Joel Schumacher afterwards was like, "No, <laughs> that was that was never a thing." Um, but yeah, I think um, I was going to say it's a short episode for us, but still nearly an hour. But um, yeah, yeah, that, that is me noted out for uh, for to be fair, it's pretty beyond all the gurning, a uh, pretty quiet minute. But in the best possible way. It, it led us down many interesting avenues. I will say we'll talk about it more because I do love it. Uh, but we'll talk about it more next week when uh, we do get the first blast of the emotional symphony. Yeah. S- like the score. that they, um, The bit of synth that comes in whenever something sad's happening. Uh, which has a pivotal role in a classic scene later in the movie. Oh, yes. uh, but we got our first few notes of it here. I'm just like... Looking forward to talking about that music more. Hell yeah, hell yeah. So the last thing we'll have to do then is consult the drinking game. Well, of course. Which my first instinct was, well, there's not going to be one here. But, but, do we count this minute as some serious family issues going on? Mm. I suppose we could, right? She's talking about a brother essentially setting her up for life, you know, sacrificing his own thing. That's pretty serious. That's a serious yeah, family issue, into- right? It's getting into. Uh, I think maybe, maybe don't drink the the shot, but maybe like smell it because <laughs> oh, you're, yeah. you're getting the hints of what's to come. Well, you can sniff it. I'm gonna drink it, people. <laughs> sniff it. Ah, there we go. There we go. It was worth it. I consider this some serious family issues. It's up to you whether you want to interpret it that way or not. Do you uh, do you interpret the okay sign as a form of fist pump? <laughs> Uh, no, that's stretching the concept a little bit. It's um, <laughs> it's with the spirit of a fist pump. No, okay. It's, I bet you he probably like there could be they shot like an hour of material of him at that door. Yeah, and he was doing all sorts. He was doing like the shadow puppets and like all well, that business of like you know people pretending they're walking downstairs behind a counter I, and stuff. I was going to say that earlier when you said he should be doing like you know other other stuff. My first instinct was when Austin Powers is fucking around behind the sofa. Yeah, <laughs> this guy. This guy is no Mike Myers, to be fair. <laughs> he did that with Wayne's World as well. Remember, he was like Cassandra when she's trying to talk on the phone. It's Mike Myers doing like stuff. Oh to yeah, he does it in both. That's a good point. Yeah, so maybe that's the thing he just does in real life. He's, he's a man who just likes pestering people when they're trying to do stuff. Uh, I a thousand percent believe that. Yeah. Mm. To be honest, that's the kind of thing I do to like a partner. It's like you—you you, you never get any. Uh, any piece. Mm. <laughs> I'm a nuisance. Uh, 
But um, but yes, yeah. People write in on the um, in the, the in the the Facebook group there. Do you find you know Dragon Sounds John's antics here charming? Why does I mean maybe I I, I just understand maybe because he is like a free wheel. He's trying to be a free wheeling happy go lucky sort. Mm. So you're kind of if you ask yourself like why is Jane so attracted to this guy? We now know her brother, and so seeing someone who's not that. It is like, okay, yeah, maybe she is. It's like, well, you know, Jeff is nice, I guess. Yeah. He's doing nice things, but he's not a nice man. So. But it's because he, it's because he he hasn't got time to be a nice man. You know, he's got he's he's doing all this for her. Yeah. yeah. You know, what what's he getting out of it? It's not like you see him going and partying. He got bought a drink by Yoshito. Hmm. That's the, yeah. Because even it felt like Yoshito was was forcing. The friendship angle yeah. of the whole affair onto him. <laughs> so he's like, I, I this, you know, everything about Jeff in that scene was like, this could have been an email, you know? <laughs> like, like, why am I having to go? Why are you dressed up for me, Yoshido? Like, I'm just wearing my normal thing that I wear all the time because I'm a cartoon character. Well, again, it's another polycule. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. But the, you just see, like, some, you know, Yoshito and Jeff doing the walk of shame in the, on the yeah, university yeah, campus yeah. background there, wandering home. <laughs> but um, this is what this is. This is everybody doing a walk of shame. Yeah, it's, it's a it's mass like walk of shame. Going home. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's university life. <laughs> but yes, yes. So uh, as, the, as the university does its en masse walk of shame, <laughs> um, we should, I guess we should break the connection. Yes, let us break the connection once more. Speak to us as usual on Facebook at the Miami Minutes Taekwondo Orphanage, Twitter at Miami Minutes, Instagram Miami Minutes, uh, website MiamiMinutes.com. And what should I promote this time? Send us an email, Miami Minutes Podcast at gmail.com. And what else have we mentioned today? We mentioned the page. Actually, let's plug everything. We mentioned the Patreon. Look up our network on there, Sleepy Charlie Media. Get bonus shit. Uh, and look up our merch on Tee Public. Also, Sleepy Charlie Media. Buy wonderful shit. Mm. It's a shit fest. <laughs> also, a uh, plug for uh, Vincent Hirsch's Taekwondo studio, which he apparently owns. Yes, we should look that up for next week. Yeah, he's got he's got uh, dojos all over the valley. You know? <laughs> it turns out he's the original Cobra guy. <laughs> mm-hmm. You see him now, he's got the slick back, grey ponytail. <laughs> like, oh my god, that's he, him! He, slick back hair, sloppy steaks, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's bound to have done that in the Cobra Guy meme page about, you know, I used to be a piece of shit. <laughs> it must have been when Terry Silver had like, the hair loose Before last Before he season. tied it back up, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dave Palace, get on it. Oh, if someone's not made that, that's like that would be criminal. <laughs> <laughs> Please do that, Dave Palace, and we will see you all again here next week for more Miami Minutes. Listen to me. Listen to me.